Father, we thank you that we uh, are experiencing your power. God, you are opening our eyes to see the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's altogether lovely. And as we're beholding this Christ, we're becoming like him. And so we want to give you thanks for that. This could not happen naturally. And so we give you the praise and the glory and honor. We thank you for the way that you have been moving. God, we don't want to take for granted your favor and your kindness toward us. So we acknowledge it's all you're doing. It's the kindness and intention of your will. And so we worship you. We worship you as a God who is holy and just, but a God who is gracious and kind to sinners. And so, Lord, we bask in that, and we bask in the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for what we have experienced and what you have been doing. And, Lord, now we, we ask as we step out into a new year that your mercies would go ahead. And your word tells us your mercies are new every morning. So we step out in, in confidence uh, that your mercies will be there for us in 2018 should you tarry. And so, God, we pray. We pray for more conformity to Jesus Christ. I pray for every life in here, God. Pour out abundant grace that if we live to 2019, that every one of us would say, by the grace of God, I am more like Jesus Christ. Lord, let that be the determined heart of every believer in this place. God, we pray then that you will now move through the word of God, that you'll teach us through our exhortation in Ephesians this morning. God, uh, do... Do you have your will with us? We open ourselves up. Move in power, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'll turn to Ephesians chapter 5, uh, there's something I want you to consider as we start this new year, and I want to give my own exhortation to this flock and really to my own soul. And so we'll take back up in 1 Peter next week in our study there, but this morning I just want to look at our use of time. What, what I like about the close of a year is to sit back and examine and ponder and just kind of think that the year is in the books. It's recorded in God's infinite mind. It can't be changed or forgotten. You, you can't redo it. You can't have a, a mulligan. You can't, I remember growing up, we used to play chance where you'd shoot baskets, and if you missed, you could say chance. You know, so you got another try at it. And then if you missed, you'd say chance for the game. And if you missed, you lost the game, and we'd go chance for tomorrow's game. And we'd do that for <laughs> forever until you finally made it. That doesn't work in the Christian life. I like to think out Judgment Day. I know that's a little strange, but uh, will this year authenticate that I am growing as a child of God, or will it evidence that God is not my supreme object of worship and loyalty? This year has been spent, and I can spend it only once. What did God think of my year? Did I spend it on the right thing? Did I spend it on Him or in my comforts and securities and pursuits of my own pleasures? Then, what can I do different this year? If God should grant me another year, what I want to ask us this morning is how then can I redeem my time? Because to me, time, the, the older you get, time even becomes more and more precious. It is truly a gift from God. And the reason that he has given us this gift called time is for his glory. We will give an account for him for how we have used this gift called time. Every one of us will give an account to God, what did you do with this thing that I gave you called time? It's a most precious commodity that God has given to us. And so this morning, I would like to lead us into some thoughts in this area in hopes that the fruit would be a whole church who redeems the time that God has given to her. We have been given time as a church, and I want us to be a church that redeems that time, that each one of us would see our individual piece of redeeming the time while we work together corporately and redeeming this time to, to put God on display for his marvelous light that he's called us into. The passage I have chosen to look at this morning is in Ephesians 5, 16. I'm going to begin reading in verse 15. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And so I have at least two hours of material, and the, 
I think I worked harder this week on what not to say than what to say. Just trying to boil it all down, knowing we had baptisms and how we were going to go. So I'm just going to just shoot, okay? Just get ready. There's not going to be any antiseptic. Just get ready, okay? All right. So I want to give you the context. I, I just, I, one of my commitments is we never preach out of context. Context is so important. And the book of Ephesians, it's so beautiful. And when I preached through Ephesians, that chapter 1-3 just grabbed me and held me. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Every blessing that God could bestow, that he could give, he gave to us in Jesus Christ. And then Paul just begins unfolding all of those blessings. You were chosen before the foundation of the world, that you'd be holy and blameless, and you have an inheritance. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. And he just starts unfolding preciousness of preciousness of what you have received in Jesus Christ. And then he comes now to chapter 4, uh, verse 1, where he says, Therefore, therefore, in light of your, your position, in light of all that God has done for you in Christ Jesus, there's a response that you must give. Live worthy of the calling that you have received. You're to give a worthy response to such beautiful mercies that God has, by His grace, given to us in Jesus Christ. And so walk worthy of it. And to live a life consistent with the mercies that you have found in Christ Jesus. That's what we're striving for every day. I want to live worthy of the mercies that I have found. What I just heard in those testimonies, I want to live worthy of a grace like that. And then Paul then says, okay, here's how you walk worthy. I want a a, a worthy walk of unity. I want you to strive to keep the bond of peace of unity in the body of Christ. I want you to be humble and forbearing and gracious and kind in the way that you dwell together to keep the unity of showing the world the way people from all walks of life dwell together as one in Jesus Christ. Then he says, I want you to have a walk of the newness of life. You are new creations. Walk different. You can't live like you did when you were in Adam. In chapter 5, verse 2, I want you to have a walk of love. I want you to love the way that Jesus Christ has loved you. And then in chapter 5, verse 3 and following, I want you to have a walk of purity. I want you to walk different than Americans who are just lost in lust and desire. I want you to walk in a pure way. The walk of purity is worthy of the gospel. And then he says in the rest of chapter 5, I want you to walk in the light. Your eyes have been opened. You see things that unbelievers don't see. You get it. You understand God and his purposes and what's he doing. Walk now as those who are informed. Those who the light has shown in and opened your eyes to see, walk in the light. And then how do we do this? This morning, uh, Paul's going to tell us to walk in wisdom, as I just read. I want you to walk in wisdom. And I want to piggyback on what Pastor Wilson preached on last week. To, to, we're going to kind of take what he shared, and I want to narrow it down to just one little aspect of, I want to walk in wisdom and, and I want to redeem the time that God has given to me because of the wisdom that God now has given me from above. So I just want to read a couple of verses to you. 1 Corinthians 1.30, by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who has become to us wisdom from God. And so in Christ Jesus, he's become to us the wisdom of God. He's revealed uh, the, the truth and who God is and the gospel and the character. In Christ, you have the wisdom of God. And then I want to read um, Colossians 2. For I want you to know, Paul says, how great a struggle I've had on your behalf. And for those who are at Laodicea and for all those who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, the walk of love, and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So what I find in Jesus Christ is all the wisdom and the knowledge of God. It's manifested, there it is, in Christ. Titus 2, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, to live with wisdom. 
to live denying the things that when you were in darkness that you loved and lived lived for, now you're going to walk in a different way. So if you were saved, I want you to hear this, you have wisdom. You now have wisdom in Christ. And what we learned last week is you hunger for more. And you keep seeking to grow in it. If you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. And so we're to keep growing in that wisdom. But I want to narrow it down this morning. What will that wisdom look like in this passage in 2018 in verse 16? Give me that wisdom. He says, you will be making the most of your time. You will be making the most of your times if you have wisdom. If your eyes have been opened and in Christ what you have seen and discovered and found, you will redeem the time that God has given to you. In fact, a fool will squander his time. He'll just waste it. It'll go right through his fingers all of his life. The fool, uh, deathbeds can be horrible or beautiful based on what you've done with this gift of time. And so a fool will squander his life. He will squander the gift of time. And that's what I like about a new year, to stop. Am I squandering this gift of time? So let's look at verse 16. Making the most of, there's a definite article here, the time. Making the most of the time. It's it's not just any time. It's your time. It's the time that God has given to you. It's the time that he has allotted to you on this earth. There is a time that God has decreed of your life from beginning to end. He's declared how long you will live on this earth. How many years every one of you have a decree by God how long of your gift of time is. And so your life, I've said it before, it's like this little hourglass as the sand just keeps coming through it. And the sand comes through every day, and the sand has been predetermined by God when it will run out. And every day, some grains run through it. And you just never know when the last one is going to be. You never know if this is my last grain of sand today, no matter what your age is. You will never know when your last day is going to come. So in light of that, redeem every grain of sand that falls through. Every day that God gives to you, there is a call then to redeem it, to not waste and squander the days that you have here on this earth. I've been called by God to redeem the gift of time. 1 Peter 1, 17. If you address as Father the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon this earth. The gift that God has given to you, live, he says, in fear during your time on the earth. Listen to Acts 20. Paul says, I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself in order that I might finish my course. In the Greek, it's the course of me and the ministry which I received from the Lord to testify solemnly of the gospel of grace, of the grace of God. I have the course of me. God has given me a course. He's given me a time. He's given me a lotted season to run on this earth. Uh, For the sake of time, look up Acts 17. And James 4, 13 through 17 uh, are very good about this uh, vapor. So we have a, a gift of time from God. And Paul is calling us here to redeem the days then that God gives to each one of us. And it's even drawn out a little more. If you look in verse 16, there are kind of two Greek words for time. One is chronos, where we get the word chronology. And it's time like on a clock or on a calendar. But that isn't the word that Paul uses. He's using the word kairos, which means an era, an epic, or an opportunity. So it would be your life. This season that God has given to you to exist here on earth, redeem that time. Every moment that God graciously gives us on this earth is a gift from him. And I want you to listen closely to this. It's to be redeemed as we have been redeemed. And when we were redeemed, we were, bought, we were brought, kind of bought back from uselessness. We were squandering our days, wasting our years here on this earth, living as if there was no God. And God purchased us out of that uselessness. And in the same way, he's bought back our days that now they are there to be used for the king of kings uh, in wisdom for his glory. 
So he, he's, he's bought back our days. And our days now are, are to be redeemed. They're, they're to be used now in a whole different way than the way we used them when we lived as fools with no wisdom and blind. So to walk in wisdom is one then who makes the most of this opportunity. And I, I think we play the fool with what we call time probably more than anything else. I, one of the most popular phrases is there's always tomorrow. Uh, I have good intentions. I'm going to start sharing my faith next week. I'm going to start reading my Bible consistently next year. I'm going to go live a life devoted to prayer when things slow down. I'm going to finally start spending quality time training my children when the job kind of gets through the busy season. I'm going to quit plopping in front of the TV at the end of every day and just squander my thoughts till I fall asleep. Guys, we, we, we have promise after promise, resolution after resolution, and it comes to an end of not having redeemed the time that this gracious God has given to me. It, it is a gift from God time. And am I redeeming this gift? Or do the years just keep going through my fingers every year saying I didn't redeem this time. I want you to look at what Paul says this does. He says in, in a couple of verses later, in verse 18, that you'll be filled with the Spirit. So you'll not spend your days dissipating in drunkenness and wine, but you will be being led by the Spirit. He says that the one who redeems the time is going to have a joy, and you're going to sing hymns and spiritual songs to one another. You're going to have a marriage where there's going to be men who are going to love their wives like Christ loved the church. And there's going to be wives who are going to submit to their husbands and give their gifts to serve the family uh, unconditionally. And there's going to be this, this redeeming of the time in marriages. And it's going to be redeemed, he says in chapter 6, in children obeying and honoring their parents. To quit squandering the time of disobeying parents and some of the testimonies we heard and all of those things is, uh, I'm done squandering and wasting those times. Kids, are some of you sitting here this morning doing that to your parents? And on the other side, parents, are you going to quit exasperating your children? You know, with the, the legalism and the heavy yokes and all of those things and just keep beating your kids that they need to obey you while you're exasperating them to no end. Bosses and employees, you'll redeem those relationships and you will work unto God and you will treat your employees in that way. And you'll put on the armor of God and you will fight the right battle. That's what happens when you redeem the time. We don't waste time. We're not to be spending it in foolishness and sin and laziness and excessive sleep and inordinate preparations of the physical body, vain talk. The list goes on and on. We're not to waste our days in those things. To give all of my energies to my local sports team, to spend all of my time on social media, there's just too much running through my fingers on a daily basis of wasted, dissipated time. And so it's so important that we get this. This is not a call to, to fill up your space of time. That is not what I am talking about. A busy person is not always a wise person. We were listening to that in Sunday school. I'm not calling you to just be busy. I'm telling you it's not mind over matter, but having your mind on what matters. It's putting the Lord Jesus Christ in a right place and redeeming, giving him a worthy response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this isn't a call to be busy, but to be fruitful with the time that God has given to you. So I'm after the dissipating of time, the wasting of time, the squandering it. So it's not just a call to go get busy, but it's to be about the right things. It's to use your time to redeem it for God. People who are so busy that you have no time for doing good to other people. You're so busied with the wrong things that you're missing out on redeeming the time that God has given and allotted to you on this earth. And prove the time for the good of your own soul and the good of others. Redeem the time that's been decreed for you for none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been bought with a great price, therefore honor God with your bodies. I, I want to redeem the time for the one who bought me. 
I want to spend and be spent for the one that has the name above all else. I want to spend for King Jesus. Because of time, I want you to write down 1 Peter 4, 1 through 12. It's a really good exhortation. Or you can wait for a year until I get there in 1 Peter. <clears throat> That's not funny, is it? <clears throat> so the question is, where do you redeem the time? Well, I want you to catch this. It's not your past. I'm not just talking about redeem your past. And I'm not even talking about just redeeming your future where you make all your plans of what you're going to do. I see this as a present reality. This is the present. Redeem it now. Uh, be sensitive to the opportunities that God brings. They're everywhere. This is what it is. You, you've been redeemed, and there are opportunities. They're, they're just endless. They're, they're, they're beautiful. I, I talked with a couple walking in here this morning, and they've been led by God to adopt uh, teenagers who are about to go out of the system and don't have families to bring them in and love them and give them families. And I'm like, that's redeeming time. I like that. And there's just there's a constant stream of needs. They're just everywhere. So to live for the good of, of, of others and unto God is to redeem the time. And so I look at every moment. I, I, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm God's. And so every conversation, I, I want them looking at it. How can I use this to redeem it? If there's someone discouraged, I want to redeem it and give them hope. Put their eyes back again on God. Why so downcast all of my soul? Put your hope in God. And I want to be faithful to help downtrodden saints. And when the prayer chain comes and there's a need for a meal, I want to pray for them and call them and go see them and help them. I want a, a lost soul. I want to go the extra mile and get with them and get them into my place and preach to them about the gospel of peace. I want to visit a shut-in. So plan and order and schedule your life of faithfulness, but don't let that get in the way of faithfulness. Consider Christ. He redeemed every moment and yet never seemed to be in a hurry. He redeemed every moment. He'd spend all nights in prayer, compassion on the multitudes. He'd be tired and he'd see hurting people and he would just sit and heal and he would keep teaching. All day he would minister to people and training dull apostles. And so he, he never, again, he never seemed to be in a hurry. He was just led by the Spirit of God. And so this isn't just hurriedness and busyness. This is walking with God with his eyes to this world and to people. And I just walk and I'm not too busy for what really matters. He never missed opportunities. Omniscience helps in this, I'll agree. <laughs> I wish I had it. But we do have the mind of Christ. And we have his spirit, so we, he says, you can do greater works than I did because now the finished cross, you have it. You can do greater works. Go and redeem back the time that God has given to you for the name that is above every name. Jesus knew his purpose was to do the will of him who sent him, to drink the cup. It was very intentional. It was a principled life, but not a hurried life. That's my charge. A principled life, but not a hurried life. I watched him as I read in the Gospels. He redeemed conversations. Luke 12, uh, the, the one runs up and says, Jesus, you know, tell, tell my brothers, whatever, to, uh, to split the inheritance. <laughs> what a waste of his time. Jesus, tell him he's got to split the inheritance with me. And he takes the time to say, be rich toward God. Luke 18 and 19, he's on his way to Jerusalem to die, and he stops for blind Bartimaeus, and he heals him. Zacchaeus says he's in journeying, you come down from there, and he, and he gets saved. John 11, Lazarus is sick. He waits two more days to glorify himself and God by the raising of Lazarus. Just look for every circumstance to turn people from darkness to this marvelous light. Look for every circumstance to help the body of Christ to become more like Christ. Don't be selfish. Don't waste all of your time on you. You've been redeemed for something better than you. And now lose your lives for that. Live in relationship with God. And make sure that we all make it to the end. Uh, give yourselves that every soul in here makes it to the very end. I, I don't want one soul to come short. And I want to use everything that I have to make sure that no soul does, here's the words away from me, I never knew you. Let, let's give ourselves to what really matters. Well, why, why do this? Well, Paul simply says in verse 16, because the days 
are evil. This, this age is doing bad, and it's growing in it. It's, it, it. We're not evolving, we're devolving. It's just all around us. And this age is marked by darkness and sin and emptiness. And so that, I, I, I think what Paul is saying, there's no other place that this is going to come from. This isn't going to come from anywhere else in this world. It's only going to come from the children of light who walk in wisdom. Because this world is so bad, we're to be good. We're to go and shine the light and the character of Jesus Christ in this world. It, it, it's so dark, we are to be the light. It's not time to lock up in our houses. It, it, the foolish are out there, so we must go and walk in wisdom. The days are so bad, let us do men good. Let us walk in wisdom and redeem the time that God has so graciously given to each one of us. I have the answer to this world's chaos and their brokenness. I have the answer. I want to redeem the time that I have to tell them the answer. It's Christ. I want to be a a guy with one string on his banjo. I want to redeem the time by heralding Jesus Christ to this world and to believers who, as they look at him, they become like him. At his funeral, Henry Martin, who was a great missionary to India, one man stood and said he never wasted an hour. Calvin, he was working on his deathbed and someone told him to stop. And he said, what would you want the Lord to find me idle when he comes? Redeem today. For it's the only one that you know that you have. And so this is the word for maybe some of the younger guys Don't spend all of your days redeeming the future of what you will do. I I see too many people lost in that. I'm going to redeem the future. Redeem today. Redeem today with a faithfulness to what God brings into your path. And you can plan and have goals and go after them. That's beautiful. But don't spend all your days living in the future and not be faithful in the very present day Or time will run through your hands and you'll look back one day and say, I squandered my time. Dream and stretch for the glory of God, but be faithful today in the little things. That's for free. Ephesians 1 through 3. After I studied that and preached through it, I just wanted to cry out for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. It's overwhelming what God has done in Christ. And so my heart is this, I just want a day as I look at Christ to redeem it. Give me one day to redeem it for my great Redeemer's praise. There's the motivation, there's all of it. Today is the only day that you're promised. Spend it on the one who was spent for you. Amen? The fool is going to squander the gift of time on himself. And so which, which are you? Are you a fool squandering your days? Are you wise? And you're redeeming the time that God has given to you. I'm going to go a little longer than normal because I just feel the need. So I'm going to make some application, and I I stole it all from Jonathan Edwards. So you're going to really like this part of the sermon. It's going to get a lot better. So I'm going to kind of move through it quickly, but just to me it felt like it was worthy to share. And he's got five points. And the first one is, why is time so precious? And he says, time's precious because eternity depends upon it. If you're here visiting, I I want you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you've been given a gift of time, and what you do with that is going to affect your whole eternity. If you don't redeem it rightly, it could end in an eternal torment in hell forever, which I pray that no one in here would ever have to go there. And if you don't redeem your time, that could be there's an eternity at stake. And if you redeem it well, there's an eternity where you'll spend basking the glories and pleasures of God forevermore. So I I can't tell you how precious time is because your eternity is dependent upon what you do with this gift called time. Also, it's very short. The scarcity of any commodity renders it a high value. Psalm 90, 11, who understands the power of thy anger and thy fury according to the fear that is due thee? So teach us to number our days that we might present to thee a heart of wisdom. Realize your life is a vapor. Live in wisdom. Number your days. Realize they're not forever. So it's very short, your life. It's a little vapor. It appears for a while, and it's going to go away. And anyone here who's older would just say, man, the years went by fast. They just, they, they blow by. 
And then there's an uncertainty of time continuing. I've already said it. You, you don't know how much longer your time here on earth is going to last. You don't know if you have another year, month, or day. Nobody knows that. And then Edward says is when it's past, though, it, it can't be recovered. Once you've spent it, you can't go back and change it. So your, your time can't be recovered. So that's why time is precious. His second point then is he says then reflect then on time past. What, what have you done with your time so far? How, how have you let the sands run through the, your, your hourglass? And just kind of reflect maybe a little of this time of the year is how have I been spending my time? How, how have I used this gift that God's given to me instead of just what I always think I want to do? How have I really spent it? And maybe take some time dealing with that and looking at it. And then thirdly, he says, here's your reproof then for how we spend our time. How little the preciousness of time is considered. How few spend their time wisely. There's nothing more precious, yet nothing, he says, we squander more. We squander it in idleness. We squander it, he says, in wickedness. And we squander it on worldly pursuits. Some of you will feel like you're faithful because you work so hard and you're spending all of your times and all of these efforts. And I'm telling you, that isn't faithfulness at all. It isn't just I'm after worldly pursuits for the sake of more worldly comforts. We can, we can waste it in many ways. So he gives us then an exhortation to improve time. Time must be a most precious commodity to us because every hour and moment then should be precious. So he says, consider the following. You are accountable to God for your time. You, you have a talent given to you by God. Our days have been appointed by God, and at the end, you will give an account. Did you give the improvement for the time that you were given? Consider every morning, I will give an account to God for how I spend this day, and I want to spend it worthy of the gospel that I have been given. Consider how much time you said you've already lost. Some of the hardest things as we get older is, oh, I wish I would have spent my days better. Consider how time is valued by those who have come to the end of it. He says, how many sinners cry for more time on their deathbeds? Oh, I wish that I could have more time. Time is of such worth to them then. When they were healthy and young, they were negligent and they wasted it. But now on that bed, they're crying for more. And then he says, consider what a value time is to those who are at the end of it. Consider those who are in hell, grieving how they spent their time and they cannot change it. They would give anything to have the opportunity that you have this morning Sitting right now is maybe God wants you to redeem the time this very hour to be saved, to, to finally come and fall upon the Lord Jesus Christ and look to his sacrificial death and life alone for your salvation. And maybe you've squandered that time and you've been just sitting under the preaching of God's word saying later, later, later. And so this morning is you don't, you don't know if you have a later. And those who are past time now can't change it. They're, they're, a des they're destinies forever. That, that is a place of no hope. You, you do not get out of hell. Consider it. So then how do we improve it? Improve the present time without delay. He says in Psalm 90, I hastened and did not delay. It's time to stop letting the years just keep running through your fingers. It's time to draw a line in the sand and say, today this stops. I'm going to redeem this time for the one who redeemed me. And so improve the parts of your time which are most precious. Improve, uh, he calls it the corporate times of the Lord's day and worship, that we come prepared to worship and redeem the times that God has given us corporately. He said, redeem the times of your communion with God, that, that you're a person who dwells with God, has relationship, walks with Him. The priority of your life is I want to abide and dwell and walk with God, I want to, so that's not busyness, that's sweetness. I need, I need to redeem the time to be someone who has communion with the living God. He says you need to redeem your time in the body of Christ. You've been given gifts, and, and they're to be used. They're to be used in the edifying and building up of one another, and, and the parables, you're, you're going to give an account for what did you do with them. And so re redeem these times that you've been given to serve the body of Christ. Do it wholeheartedly. Redeem the time of evangelism. This is the time that the, the, the door to the ark is going to be closed. 
And this is the time where it's open that we can call men of every tribe, tongue, and nation to Jesus Christ. Redeem the time. Get in lives. Stay in them. I, one of the most greatest rebukes to me is if we come to a Christmas service or Easter service where the gospel's preached and I have nobody to invite. Nobody. And I understand if you're sick and you're a shut-in, I get all that. But I'm talking about people who live in this world day in and day out, and you have nobody to even invite to an evangelism service. Let that be a rebuke. Just get in and labor and fight for souls. Are you, are you right here? Is there someone you can name that you're laboring with to see them come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Redeem the time with unbelievers. Redeem the time with your wives. How long? I, I, the hardest things I've been through is people who have to bury a spouse. And, and then you sit there saying, I wish I would have loved them better and more. And I, I want you to redeem the time that you have with a husband or a wife and quit spending it fighting and arguing and being, being focused on lesser things. Be focused on the greater things. And to redeem the time is to take these little wives of ours and to give our lives that they would grow and become more like Christ. And wives, to give yourselves, even to difficult men we're going to see in 1 Peter 3, to, to pray for them and, and help them grow and use the gifts and, and be a submissive, beautiful wife instead of just fighting your husband on every turn. Redeem these times. Redeem the times with training your, your children. That I, I don't want you to say your job is more important than the soul of your child. Redeem these time that God has given to us. And don't squander them on the lesser things on your deathbed when you're going to say, why did I spend my life on that? Revelation 10, 5. The angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that it liveth forever and ever who created heaven. And the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Time is going to end. It is going to come to an end, and there's going to be an eternity. And so I'm crying out that we would be faithful to redeem this time. And I want to close with one last thought, as I want to put this back in context and Ephesians 1 through 3 is God has done everything necessary in Christ Jesus for your salvation. And I want you to look at Jesus Christ this morning. He's the only one who ever redeemed every hour of every day perfectly. You read the Gospels, everything he did was for the will and the glory of his Father. He redeemed time perfectly. And you're going to now stand before God in judgment based upon his keeping of time and how he used it and what he did while he walked this earth. So I want you to see your hope is not to go out and redeem the time enough so that God can accept me or love me. Jesus Christ did it. And now by faith, God will treat you as if you redeemed every second of every day in perfect righteousness the way the Son of God did. And that, you, that Jesus Christ was put up on a cross for all of your lack of redeeming the time, all of your sin and squandering and wasted and he propitiated the wrath of God for it so that now you could be acceptable to God and the beloved. So I want you to walk out of here saying this, I'm accepted because of Christ. And because of that, I want to live worthy. I want to go be faithful with the time that God has given to me as a response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? There's a big difference. All right, let's go to God and we'll, we'll pray. Father, I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank you. He is such a picture of redeeming the time by redeeming sinners. And so, Lord, we want to give a worthy response to someone so beautiful and lovely and such a, an amazing work of what he did. And God, we don't want to waste these days. And I, I, I pray this is not a call to busyness, but a, a call to, to focus. It's a call to, to think the thoughts of God, to have wisdom to think rightly about the lives that you've given to us. And so, God, help us to spend and be spent for you and you alone and for your people and for the lost. God, help us to walk in freedom 
and to see needs and to love this message and to peddle it wherever we can. Oh God, I want to give it to every soul. And I pray, Lord, that we would be a people uh, individually and corporately who redeem 2018 if we should live and if you should tarry. God, we want to present to you a worthy offering, a worthy sacrifice because you've given us the worthy one. And so I thank you for the beauties of Christ. And I pray that every soul would just be staring at him right now, staring at him in faith. If there are any who have come in here that are not believers, God, I pray that they would realize their time is going to come to an end. And I pray that they would feel an urgency this morning for their souls, that they wouldn't put this off any longer, that they would come to Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you would save sinners this morning. And I pray that you would sanctify believers by... Uh, by hearts being stirred and committed to redeeming the time that you have so graciously and freely given to us. God, let us spend and be spent for the name that's above every name. And it's in Christ Jesus that we do pray. Amen.